Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 72 where you send me your email questions about Flat Earth to msargent23 at comcast.net That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net Let's just get right to it First one is called An Aha Moment Mark, I have been watching FE videos on YouTube, which inevitably led to different videos. I was watching some Hollow Earth stuff, which was interesting. There is no denying that there is tunnels underground. I will not correct grammar on the fly, guys. Which I feel why Hollow Earthers think the way they do. Both FE and Hollow can't be right, or can they? My aha thought was that maybe we are on an infinite plane with a dome above our pod, and there are pods with a dome above them. The hollow part is the tunnels that lead to other part, parts, pods, and maybe that is how more advanced civilizations move between pods. They can't get enough, or they can't get through our dome, so they travel under it and enter our sky. We believe they came from space. This is just a thought that maybe Effie and Hollow could come together on. Craig Thomas. Yeah. Yeah, it's not bad at all. I like it. I like it better than a lot of other ideas, so pretty cool. Thank you for that. Good aha moment there. This next one is called F.E. Mark, in the movie Dumb and Dumber, Jim Carrey is in a bar. As he walks out, he sees on the wall is a framed newspaper that reads, We Landed on the Moon. Jim acts as if he had never heard that and says, No way, and starts screaming about landing on the moon. That bar that Jim was in, the hotel bar of the same hotel that The Shining was filmed at. Oh, I didn't know that. I don't believe any flat earth or moon hoax person has ever brought up this uh correlation and that's from caleb actually yes they have i have I, in fact i've had screenshots of that sent to me but good that you're on it thank you this one's called survival guide and coast to coast interviews thanks bro from nick and yeah if anyone wants a survival guide all you have to do is send what he just did just put it in the title say give me your survival guide and also coast to coast interviews i cannot is the only interviews i cannot put up on youtube or anywhere because coast to coast copyrights the hell out of them and they struck me for just putting up a trailer and I, I, none of the interview was even in the trailer and they caught I, I returned it of course but that's how serious they are it's literally shoot first and ask questions later when it comes to coast to coast go figure right conspiracy place but, you know, I, I understand. Uh, this one's called Flatness, all caps. In fact, the email is in all caps. I'm going to read it anyway, but I'm not going to yell. <laughs> but it makes sense. Uh, Mr. Sergeant, I am 75 years old and have been into Flat Earth for about two weeks. I am completely sold on it. I feel like I have been scammed for all my life with the lies that have been told and taught. Thank you so much for bringing this subject to light. Are there any organizations that I can join? No. No, I mean, there's some Flat Earth Facebook groups, stuff like that. But no, don't join the Flat Earth Society. Lord knows I caught some hell for that. Uh, doing it four years ago, back in the summer, fall of 2014. But I have never endorsed the Flat Earth Society. Look, social media outranks them and has been running ripshot over them forever. Uh, anyway, my family, with one exception, thinks I am ready for the loony bin. Yep. Thanks again to you and Eric DeBay. This is from Francis Frank Lipka. You're welcome, Francis. This one's called 12 Moon Men. Mark, there are 12 apostles and 12 deceitful scoundrels who supposedly walked on the moon. I find that scary and odd. Thoughts? Stay good and manly, my friend. Robert Don in L.A. Son of Robert Don. And he, lives, he leaves me the best voicemails. I, I love Robert Don. Uh, yeah, yeah, 12 apostles, 12 people that said they were on the moon. Sure. Like it, like the connection there. Numbers, numerology. Moving on. This one's called Satellites Beam Signals. Satellites is spelled wrong, but that's okay. Dear Mark Sargent, and Sargent is abbreviated, SGT, I'm being fined, fined from receiving free TV. I set up a satellite dishes on top of my mobile home. Oh boy. Cops got called on me, but how is it stealing if it nays the ones who is beaming the signals over this trailer park without my permission, NASA, oh, NASA, oh, good Lord, he spelled NASA wrong twice. One, he spelled it N-A-Y-S. The second time he spelled it N-A-Y-S-A. -S Own space, I guess. That's from Ricky Leahy, probably at a trailer park somewhere. And I'm not knocking trailer parks, all God's children, not judging. 
I I don't know. I, I don't even know how to answer that, but hey, at least I read it. All right, this one's called Video Series. Mr. Sergeant, thank you so much for your research and informative, logical presentation. I'm not sure how to break these truths to the people around me, but I personally was really moved by some of the YouTube videos showing the flaws in the ISS fakery. The guy pulling on the wires of his fellow astronaut, oh yeah, that's a good one, is just so clear. No one can argue that one. Then I suppose I can gently present people with more examples of the facade they are believing in. And lately, it seems more people are waking up to the mind control perpetuated by the authority. Anyways, keep up the good work. Amen. Todd Mason, environmental scientist. Sorry, ever since I saw Mr. Smith say environmental in... um. Uh, in the Matrix, so I thought it was brilliant. It was listen to it if you read a chance. It was that 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 great little monologue that he did to Morpheus, and he, he said that um, human beings uh, don't uh, adapt to their surrounding environment. Uh, this one's called "Hello, Are You the Guy That Was on YouTube Talking About the Flat Earth and as Antarctica Is a Rub." That's from, and that's that's literally the entire email. It was all in the title, and that's from Aleska. Zadrafkovic. And I will put that in my to-do pile because I have to tell him, yeah, it is me. This one's called No Subject. Hello, Mark. I've been watching your videos and I really believe that the earth is flat. How can I be of any help? And I, and I know you can help me. Yeah, that's from Malad. And yeah, I want to be of help. Spread the word. Get out there. But be careful. Remember, the first rule of Flat Club is that you do not talk about Flat Club. Size up your audience. Just don't go out into the... I mean, if you want to go out in the street and start tapping shoulders, that's fine. Uh, but if you're talking to family members, be careful. Or co-workers, or your spouse, or significant other. Uh, you don't, don't, you know, don't just rush into it. Be subtle. This one's called Earth Truth. Hello, Mark. I've been watching your YouTube videos and been touched to the point where I am now a believer of God. The way you explain things in your videos really makes it easier for people to understand. I have started a small project myself to help spread the news of the flat earth. I would like to place a link to enclosedworld.com from earthtruth.net if you're okay with that. I would also like to share some of your videos with your blessing. Thanks, Matt Bailey. And yeah, great. That was sent in March. So I will, I, hopefully he's already done it. If not, I will just give him my okay. Yeah, you guys can do anything you want. Take any of my content. Most of it's Creative Commons license anyway. And the only stuff that isn't probably is because it's got copyrighted content, you know, because I love using copyrighted music and some video clips here and there. You know, why waste the production value that's already been done? This one's called Flat Earth Atmosphere. Uh, Mark, I was discussing the flat earth the other day with a guy at work. We talked about the atmosphere and how, according to the globe model, it spins with the earth. My point is at ground level, at the equator, the earth supposedly spins at a thousand miles an hour. Therefore, as you elevate, you increase the circumference. So the atmosphere, the further you go up from, increases the speed to keep up with the ground level. Yes, you're absolutely right, because the circle actually gets bigger. Don't know the math, but I'm sure for every mile of altitude, the speed of rotation would have to increase as well. So really, planes at 30,000 feet are ba are battling faster faster than 1,000 mile an hour spin speed. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Good point. Just another thought against the globe. Thank you, Craig. Flat as frick. You know what I mean there. This one's called Tweet. Hi, Mark. Just saw this posted on Twitter, and I am passing it on to you. Okay, so it was sent by Eddie Schneider, and I don't know who that is. Uh, the 11-year-old came up with a TV pitch that is Stone Cold Genius, a reality show in the vein of Amazing Race that follows a group of flat earthers trying to travel to the edge of the world. Laughy face. Keep doing what you do, Mary Ferrara. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to happen. I'm talking to a producer tomorrow. As a matter of fact, yet another producer, and they seem pretty serious, and they want to turn it into a television show. And why wouldn't they? It's it's too interesting not to, and the exposure would be invaluable. Okay, this one's called quotes. Okay, it's a little something like this. Hey, listen, I found your wallet the other day. You want it back? Am I hallucinating? What the hell do you think you're doing? You're causing a major disturbance on my. Oh, oh, oh! These are all movie quotes. Holy crap. Uh, I can't do them all this fast. Uh, boy, these are really good movie quotes. Okay, I'll, I'll read the movie quotes real quick. I imagine they're one line a piece. Hey, listen, I found your wallet the other day. You want it back? Okay, that's a pretty obscure quote. Am I hallucinating? What the hell do you think you're doing? Also a different quote. 
Uh, you're causing a major disturbance on my time. Wow. These are so... Come on. You got to get... Part of the image, part of our appeal is that uniform. You know that. You want me to put the stuff back on? Yes, I do. Show a little pride. All right. I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm going to volunteer my leadership to this platoon. An army without leaders is like a foot without a big toe. Yeah, all right. That's stripes. I know that one. Uh, who's the fellow that owns this sh <laughs> this shithole? Uh, I don't know that one. That's right. I've killed women and children. I've killed just about everything that walked or crawled at one time or another, and I'm here to kill you. That's Clint Eastwood. That's from Unforgiven. From Unforgiven. That's a brilliant quote. I love that quote. I don't know who wrote that, but no one could have delivered it as well as Clint Eastwood. Uh, this one's all right. I'm coming out. Any man I see out there, I'm going to shoot him. Any son of a bitch takes a shot at me, I'm not only going to kill him, but I'm going to kill his wife. All his friends and has burned his damn house down. Oh, crap. I know this one. Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, that's a Western. That's a Western quote. Uh, wait, is that also Unforgiven? Yeah, I think that's also Unforgiven. You you tried to trick me there and do two one and one. Okay, this one's uh, called Money Won is Twice as Sweet as Money Earned. Don't know that one. Uh, we got a racehorse here, a thoroughbred. You make him feel good, uh, I'll teach teach him how to run black stallion maybe uh this one's called you gotta have two things to win you gotta have brains you gotta have balls now you got too much of one and not enough of the other oh i should know that one and the last one is you walk into a shoe store with 150 bucks you come out with one shoe <laughs> we were working on 5,000. <laughs> what uh, at least i got some of them some of them are pretty obscure though but thank you for uh, that was sent by uh neil thank you neil some great quotes there Okay. Uh, yeah, I will read movie quotes if you send them to me. And by the way, anyone that was giving me crap, and not many people have about me doing a little trailer. Because remember, I love movies. And I love people that review movies. And my two biggest favorite channels, the ones that are doing it, are, one's a fairly big channel. It's called Red Letter Media. You probably heard me talk about it. The other one's called Mindless Entertainment. This little tiny channel done by a small girl who's got to be 24, 25. She looks really young. And she just goes off in these epic rants, just just all straight from the heart. I mean, I mean, there is no heart to mouth. That is that is her style. And I did a little. little I, I'm fan enough that I did a little trailer for her. She just hit ten thousand subs, and uh, I thought I'd little, do a little trailer for her. And I know she's probably not going to use it on her channel, but if it gets her some subs, I'm happy to do it. Uh, and if you guys run into other channels that you think I might like, uh, feel free to throw them at me. This one's called F.E. Dear Mr. Sergeant, I just saw your YouTube video and I'm hoping you can answer some questions. Do you have any insights into the celestial south pole, stars around the point in the southern sky? Yep, display system. And people, you don't like the display system? Fine, come up with an alternative. That's Until I get a better one, that's what I'm using. Magnetic south pole compasses seem to point to a spot in the south, I think. No, they do not. Absolutely dead wrong. I've got a subject matter expert that worked for Australian military intelligence and he says there is no south pole, magnetic south pole. And I always wondered that anyway because up in the north we you know we all know the, the compass dominates north but eventually the southern pole is going to dominate when you get in the, to the south and he goes it never happens never happens why would it because there's no south pole uh three gravity proved by neptune due to the newtonian equations on gravity and the aberration in uranus's orbit people correctly figure out there would be a neptune before it was discovered proving gravity is real uh no no, 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 no. Just, well, I mean, all right, let me put it this way. The solar system is an illusion. Just because you can predict some of the things of that illusion doesn't mean it's not an illusion. Kind of help there, maybe? Number four, why do some planets retrograde? Don't know. Also part of the sky system. Look, it's, it's all part of a planetarium. I realize we may never get answers to these, but if you have any, I would appreciate them. Thanks, Robert Blondke. Blondke. B-L-O-N-K-E. He's a Christian school teacher and nearly converted flat earther. Hopefully that helps. This one's called Coast to Coast Interview. Thanks, Mark. Try the top rated email app. I don't know, but, but then there's a link to the top rated. So yeah, anyone want Coast to Coast? All you have to do is put in Coast to Coast and I will send it to you. I did one with George Nori and one with a substitute teacher host. This one's called Three Question Marks. Flat Earth? Oh boy. Yep, I'll have to send him the link. This one's called, How do you explain photos from space showing the Earth as a globe? Just curious, is this ruse globally manufactured? 
EDS, yes, it is. And I don't have to explain them. They're all composites. And if everyone's listening for the first time, first blue marble. Look it up. The first blue, bar blue marble photo taken of Earth was in 1972. The second one was 43 years later. It's two generations of people that never even had a photo of Earth. They just milked that one photo of 1972 that showed the bottom part of Africa and all of Antarctica. No coincidence there. And the... Um, lost my train of thought here. The second blue marble shot, what you can you can see the link to it in my, any description of any video I make. I actually put it there because it's on the WhiteHouse.gov page. People will say, "Well, no, you know, the second blue marble. There was other shots. No, no, it, there wasn't. I mean, Scott Kelly wrote the press briefing from space, apparently, because that's what you do when you're up in space. You take the second blue marble shot ever in the history of space, and then you send it to the White House." Anyway, this one's called No Subject. I was watching your video, They Hide God with the Biggest Lie Ever, and I believe Admiral Byrd is a time traveler. Ooh. And I believe when he died, he comes back as Scott Walter, the guy from the show America Unearthed. And when I tried to find out Scott's biography, when he was born, I couldn't find anything but a post talking about how Scott asked Wikipedia to take down his biography because of the false alterations to its content. That just sounds fishy to me. Please get back to me on what you think. Thank you for your time. Hmm. Admiral Byrd, a time traveler. It's an interesting thought. I personally think they killed him because he was too friendly in front of the camera and he was going to let it slip. That's my opinion. This one's called Weightlessness in Space. Mark, after viewing some of the videos related to weightlessness in space, faked ISS missions, and zero, zero G vomit comet, I was wondering if some of the weightlessness could be explained differently. The video on the ISS have a different look than the ISS in that the people in the ISS seem more under control. Since some flat earthers suggest the sun, moon, and earth workings are based on electromagneticism, oof, and that gravity can be explained by said force, then maybe the apparent weightlessness could be explained as well. If the sun and the moon retain their paths from this process, then maybe the lessening of the EM force, I'm just going to call it EM force as well, at high, because he stopped doing it too, at high altitudes could give a similar effect to items that have less mass. And yeah, you know, the peanut gallery was talking about this, how that there could be some sort of EM force up there that's hanging stuff around. Yeah, maybe. Uh, less mass, therefore less EM. A lower level EM at high altitudes inside the dome could have the same effect. Yes, you're right. Maybe at 250 more miles or so, the EM is not that strong in relation to the Earth's surface. Yep, very possible. Sure. Have not been able to think it through and do not know enough to do so. Just throwing it out there. This part, I really struggle with FE. I have to consider that other conspiracies could be true. By the way, I did spell check before sending this email. Keep it flat, Tom in Georgia. Yep, and you did. And I didn't, I didn't call you out on it. So good work. Yeah. Spell check your emails. Grammar check too, if you can. Uh, flat earth proof concept. That's the next one. Mark, I have only recently become a flat earther. I am also a software developer. I have often heard that the way the computer virus is spread can be used as an accurate representation of how a virus might spread in a pandemic scenario. Yep. 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 Also true. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, well, I don't want to get into it, but yeah, you're absolutely right. I was thinking about the concept of creating a multiplayer computer game. Okay. The players in the game would be told that the planet they were living on was a simulation of Earth. The players would naturally assume a globe Earth. And it would actually be a flat Earth matching the azimuthal equidistant map. There could be some sort of financial gain by discovering how to get into the specific areas of Antarctica, as well as incentive to keep it a secret. I would, it would seem to me that the results of the game could probably mimic what is actually occurring in the world now. This is just an idea I've thought of while driving to work this morning and thought of you as you have mentioned that you have a background in gaming. Yes, I do. Obviously, this would be a massive undertaking, but figured I would share it with someone. Pete. Yeah. Uh, good one, Pete. I like it. I like, I like the concept and I, I think eventually someone will get to that. This one's called Flat Earth Student. Mark, what's your advice on flat earthers going to school? What do we do now entering university? That is, stay away from the physical sciences. That's from Lee. And yeah, Lee, if you're listening to this, stay away from the physical sciences because they will all have to be written. Anything that ends in analogy, anything that's tied to astrophysics or astronomy, uh, yeah, stay away from it. Stay away from stay away from the physical sciences. It just there's nothing, nothing, nothing good is going to come come from it. Do something else. Learn English, learn 
there's all sorts of subjects you can learn. I'm, I'm not going to pick one for you. Uh, this one's called Survival Guide, please. This is from Adam Hendrick. Yep. You'll get the Survival Guide. You get a Survival Guide. You get a Survival Guide. This one's called Moon Question. Hi, Mark. Very interesting topic. I'm quite open-minded to it and find many of the arguments work, worth deep thought. The flight issue is very convincing. I know I have much more to learn, but after several hours of video watching, there is one problem I cannot begin to understand, and I have not been able to find the subject covered. As I understand, the sun and the moon whiz around within the dome, and I am fine with that, but I wonder how can the moon show itself to us as an object subject to phasing when there is nothing between the sun and the moon to create us curving shadow? Okay. If it be the case, the moon has its own source of luminescence, why is it not always seen as a full circle like the sun? If you have any videos touching on this matter, please send. Thanks thanks for your work, Bill. And yeah, Bill, again, if and I, and I know you, maybe you haven't gone into a planetarium, but go into it. They simulate the night sky very well, extremely well, as a matter of fact. Uh, the, um, uh, the, you know, there's no physical object when you're in a planetarium. It just shows waxing and waning crescents, half moons. The only thing we have a hard time with in a planetarium is showing the sun because we don't have a, a light source that's that bright, at least until now. I think the OLEDs, the really good ones, you could really crank something up up there. But, but as far as a projection system, it would be tough to do to simulate the sun. But the night sky, we can literally do anything we want. And we have been able to do pretty much we, we everything we wanted since the late 1970s, at least in, in a small dome situation. This one's called Hello World. Hi, am I contacting Mark Sargent? Yes, you are, which means you go in the other pile. I probably should have written back to him right away, but yep, that's all right. Better late than never. This one's called Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. I've watched all the Flat Earth videos, and the evidence seems very compelling. It seems to me that the quickest and cheapest way to prove it would be to charter a plane from Melbourne and fly due south 180 degrees over the pole. Compass then switches to 000 and head for South America. You could have two planes. The lead plane has Bill Nye, Dawkins, Brian Cox, and Tyson. Their faith would mean there is nothing to worry about. And if they do hit something, the rear plane can do a hard turn away. All the best, Joe. No, I've got to, no, that's that's not going to work because you're using a compass. You have to bypass, uh, you have to do line of sight. You, you can't use GPS. You can't use compass. It, everything works for the system, kind of like the matrix. No, my new test, if you want to prove to to me, in fact, you want to get me to, to quit Flat Earth tomorrow, it's easy. Get NASA or whoever makes the suits for NASA to loan me, under controlled conditions, of course, a spacesuit, an astronaut suit. Put me in a vacuum chamber, pull the lever. No way is it ever going to work. It is a clue that I'm working on, clue 13. I should have it up here by the beginning of June. Uh, I've already written the text for it. I just have to record the voice and do the slides and, and make sure it's polished enough. But it basically says that, look, uh, a bag of air cannot survive in a vacuum chamber. You want to have some fun, just start doing YouTube videos or just start looking up YouTube videos on vacuum chambers and things that happen in them. A bag of air cannot survive in a vacuum chamber. An, an astronaut suit is just a bag of air with a guy in it. That's it. It's mostly, you know, it's, there's a lot of air in that padding. Never, ever, ever should be able to work because there's no force that can counteract a vacuum. The suit would go as tight as a snare drum and burst. And even if you could come get a suit that wouldn't burst, it would still go tight as a freaking snare drum because it would inflate almost immediately and you wouldn't be able to bend anything. No arms, no legs, no shoulders, no fingers. You would not be able to do anything. And that's what I, that's, that's my challenge right there. It, it's on the ground. You don't need rockets. You don't need planes. Just need a university vacuum chamber. Put me in it. Pull the lever. Of course, there's a cat to that one you can't use a g-force suit i mean it cannot be tethered it's got to be a self-contained astronaut suit like they used on the moon miraculously enough uh, and the other caveat is that there's got to be two suits one for me and one for the person that's challenging me see they're going to go in there with me you got faith in science you should have nothing to worry about but i don't think you get that much faith sort of like the bulletproof vest test where, you know, everyone's got faith in bulletproof vests. Very few people would put it on and get shot. Now I know there's blunt force trauma. But let's say there was padding to reduce that. People would be really hesitant. So what's your problem? Anyway, and, and it, yeah, again, like, look this up. And I don't want to spend too much time on this. Look this up if you get a chance. Find me. Everyone knows, and the part of the clues is like this. You can see astronauts swimming in swimming in pools all day long, 20 feet of water. That is the exact opposite of what you should be doing in an astronaut suit. 
The only thing, the way to stress test a suit is put them in there and put them in a freaking vacuum chamber. And I know it's like, oh no, there's a vacuum chamber test where the suit's there, but the guy's not there. It's like, what the hell does, does that do? No, no, if I'm going up there and risking my life, I'm going to test my own equipment. That means I'm going to be put in a chamber and slowly start pulling the oxygen out of it. And it's not like you have to do it right away. You can do it and, and if I think, you know, things are weird or there's a leak or something's going wrong with the suit, then I'm going to, you know, have problems. But I would never go up in space, ever go up in space unless I tested my own suit. Sorry, wouldn't, wouldn't do it. Hell, skydivers generally, you know, pack their own chutes because they want to make sure cars are tested for thousands of hours before the public ever gets a hold of one. So why don't we have a single video of a self-contained suit, not a G4 suit. That's part of a plane. G4 suits completely different. That's a tethered suit, a self-contained suit. Why are there no videos, no videos of an astronaut in a vacuum chamber in a self-contained suit? That's the crux of the whole thing for me. It's, it is the linchpin. And I, anyone from out there as NASA is listening, you know, you've been waiting for this. It has nothing to do. The shuttles prove nothing. The ISS proves nothing. The rockets prove nothing. It's the simple thing. It's the little things that are glossed over. In this case, it's the suit. That's my test. Sorry. That's my little rant for that. Uh, this one's called, oh, what's it called? Coast to Coast. Mark, please send me the Coast to Coast interview. Thanks, Bill. Yep. Sent that to him. Coast to Coast interview. This one's called Flat Earth. Hey, Mark, just checking out your vids. Yesterday watched another one and started to look into it. Are you still active? Yes, I am. And I wrote him back. This one's called the FE memes I sent you. Hello, Mark. Thanks for waking me up to your Hiding God video and Flat Earth Clues vids. Feel free to use the Flat Earth memes I sent you. All you want, they are yours. They're taken from actual Marvel Zombies cover art and altered by me. No need to give me any credit. I don't check my emails for weeks and months, so don't try to communicate with me here. <laughs> I won't see the message. I just want the info out. My first three memes I sent was a month or so ago when I first, first you did, used paint. The next six I made over the last week. Have fun. Keep up the good fight. All right. Well, Hopefully it listens to the show anyway. This one's called Sulfur in the Dome. Mark, there is a location at the foot of Masada, Israel. They claim is Sodom because it has structures that look like remnants of an ancient city, only now in ash form. And in this ash is balls of sulfur, which are 99% pure, the purest on earth. When you light the sulfur on fire, it puts off blue light and is not enough to burn through metal. It is hot enough. To burn through metal spoons there are videos showing this on youtube so here's my theory where did the sulfur come from there are no local volcanoes and it is pinpoint in the remains of the city only what if the lights we call stars which are somehow entrapped in the dome or above it are actually sulfur balls able to burn much longer any lower oxygen up there the bible does predict that the stars of heaven will fall to the earth in revelation 6 13 thoughts yeah yeah, again, I think it's an enclosed system, and if something really, really horrible happened to the system, parts could fall down. Yeah, absolutely. This one's called Coast... Wow, more... Coast to Coast Interview! Hi, Mark. Kindly send Coast to Coast Interviews. Also, if the equator is moving at 1,000 miles an hour, wouldn't there be constant sonic booms at the latitude where the rotation speed of Earth equals 767 miles an hour? No. No, technically, it wouldn't, because... No. No, it wouldn't. And I'm trying to give you a good reason why. If you believe mainstream science, they're saying that the atmosphere is being carried along with it. So there, there's not going to be a sonic boom. Although you're you're right, at least in the, the math. Uh, final thought. Strange women lying in ponds, disturbing swords is no basis for a system of government. Don't know what that means. Supreme executive power derives from a mandate from the masses, not from some fanatical aquatic ceremony. You can't expect to wield supreme executive power just because some watery tart threw a sword at you. Oh, the Excalibur thing. I mean, oh, is it, oh, I'm sorry. This, this is a Monty Python quote. I mean, if I went around saying that I was an emperor just because some moistened bink had lobbed a scimitar at me, they'd put me away. <laughs> That's from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Keep it f flat, Frank. Yeah, it's a good quote. It's a good one. I like it. And I forgot. I don't, I don't have all the Monty Python stuff memorized. But I, I do love the, the uh, most of their work. Uh, this is called Tracking Vessels Across Earth's Oceans. Mark, are the readily available online resources that provide satellite tracking of vessels fake in any way? Minton. No, but here's the problem with tracking boats. One, they are 
infinitely slower than planes. I mean, you might as well be watching paint dry. And the second is boats can do something that planes can't, which I noticed pretty quickly, which is when you're heading towards a port and the port isn't ready for you, they just tell you to stop. And then the boats just sit there and they never actually make it to the port. <laughs> they just sit there for days. And it's like, oh, because they don't have to, you know, a, a boat can basically stop. Planes cannot, which is why I always use planes. The boats, just, I'm sorry, it just takes too long. If somebody had some time lapse and had a whole bunch of time to look, yeah, I suppose you could use boats. Although more fun would be to look at bird migrations because birds also kind of like planes can't really stop that often. I mean, yeah, some of them can swim. But most of them keep flying. This one's called Chatting with a Flat Earther. Mark, I'm Ryan. And I interviewed with Andrew Hales on Laugh recently. Unfortunately, Andrew heavily... Oh, yeah, I remember this guy. Heavily edited my responses. And any time it got too scientific, he cut it short and made me seem a lot less informed than I am. Anyways, the video is doing well. And, of course, mainstream will laugh and make their jokes. But I think overall the message is at least somewhat received and hopefully makes people ask a few questions to themselves. I'm emailing you because I have two questions. You recently were talking with someone on your show. And the gentleman said that he remembers seeing the curve when he took a flight in the Air Force to a very high altitude. You do not believe this is possible. Nope, I do not. I've got too many pilots that have already said that they don't see the curve. I disagree. I think the curve is visible. I disagree. However, the surface of Earth is flat. So I have two simple questions that I would like to ask and explain it clearly here. And he sent me a link. Thanks for your work on YouTube in the comments on the chatting with video. Ryan Zem. Okay. This one's called YouTube Clues Video. Hi, Mark. My name is Ian. I just introduced to I was just introduced to the reality of our disc earth. I came across your clues video series and it's been very eye opening. It's so clear now and it makes so much sense despite the ridicule and cynical response from most everyone. Every fiber in my being knows it's true. Anyway, I was just curious how your trip down the rabbit hole began. In truth, Ian. It, well, if you, it's in every interview. If you guys want to, just about every interview, every person that has interviewed me has asked that question. And I got into it because I was bored with almost every other conspiracy back in 2014, looked into Flat Earth, and now I've regretted it because it's consumed my life. And that's all I do now. I, I, everything I do is Flat Earth. So, but that's how, yeah, that's how I got into it. I looked at um, a video by a guy named Cesar out of Germany who was talking about the flight pads, and then I watched uh, Matt Boylan's uh, video, his only rational, coherent video, where he was sitting on the couch interviewed by his Canadian girlfriend up in Montreal about how he was told by NASA people that G about the GPS systems. And then I just kind of dug into it from there and eventually had to make my own series because I wanted to work it out for myself and put it out on the internet. And here we are. A whole a thousand videos later, and all sorts of fun opportunities, uh, all because I said, yeah, Flat Earth might be right. And I do believe it. I mean, I believe it 100%. I'm willing to put my life on the line with the vacuum test. This one's called, Hey, a Sarge, check this out, Ghost from the Pinnacle to the Pit. It's an official music video. Sarge, you got to check out this video and let me know what you think. You use it on your show. Steve, hope all is well. I will check it out if I get a chance. Promise. This one's called... Uh, hello friend. Hey stranger. When are you coming to Phoenix? Haha. Ha, interesting show tonight. First time I've heard in weeks. When or where is the next meetup you are going to? The next one I supposedly am going to is going to be down in Los Angeles. Uh, going to be near the Salton Sea. National Geographic is, is thinking of flying me out to have me there because there's a skeptic society that wants to try to disprove Flat Earth and with shooting over the Salton Sea. It's like, yeah, whatever. Good luck. But I'll, I'll go if they ask me or if they give me tickets. This one's movie quote. I want my $2. Oh, too easy. Fred. That's from Fred. I want my $2. Better off dead. John Cusack. Great line. Great, li great little ladies movies. John Cusack did some. I mean, he some of his better work was in the 90s and 2000s. But he, he, he he's great. He and his sister Joan did some fantastic stuff in the 80s. Love them. This one's called Survival Guide, please. Hi, Mark. I really enjoy listening and watching your videos. Keep up the great work. Thanks, John Hollingshead. Hollingshead. I pronounced that right. And moving on, this one's called Creepy Voicemail from Strange World 143. Hi, Mark. Okay to read on air. Caller on the last Strange World was referring to this creepy voicemail, which allegedly a random person received special military codes in reference to the MH370 Malaysian flight mystery. The message spells out, Danger SOS. It is dire for you to evacuate. Be cautious. They are not human. Hmm. 
I know you believe Malaysian flight was lost due to lack of GPS over the ocean. However, no, I don't think they were lost because of lack of GPS. I mean, we couldn't find them after they went down. Whatever brought the plane down, that could be completely different. So anyway, sorry. Uh, could there be some other theory to explain it? Was it hijacked by some shadowy new world order group? Were aliens involved? Uh, what is even creepier is that the same Twitter user got another message later telling them to stop talking about the original voicemail in Malaysian. From your experience, does this sound like an actual military transmission or is it a hoax? Why are Malaysians telling him to stop talking about it? Take care, Marcus. Oh, not that many people call me Marcus. Great show, Jack. And yeah, no, I, I think, I, again, whatever brought down, the, brought down the Malaysian flight, I think is completely different from what from the fact that they can't find them. The fact that they can't find them, look, any plane could go down for natural or unnatural reasons in those zones, and the black, black box isn't going to really help you because you're not going to be able to... The transmission, nothing can link to the black box, is what I'm saying. Black box works great if you're in domestic territory, if you're within ground radar, but other than that, you're not going to be able to do much. This one's called Star Trails. Hi, Mark. I'm an Ohioan residing in Morrow County. I'm confused, to say the least. A statement was posed about Flat Earth. The Earth is flat and why the star trails, blah, blah, blah. Yep, they went on to say the star trails in the northern hemisphere travel in one direction, while the star trails in the southern travel... Yes, yeah, I think it's true. I mean, other people don't, but I think it's multiple display systems. That's it. If, if you have a building that's really, really large, or simulation, which I'm very comfortable with, you create instanced... Um, uh, which is the realization of an object, you create multiple displays based on geography or based on the individual. We can we have that capability now. You can do it right now. Been able to do it for 15 years, as a matter of fact, on a smaller scale. Another Star Trails one. Wait, same one? Different name. Weird. Same. All right, well, get rid of that one. This one, been watching the videos and I am convinced. Hi, Mark. Hope you are well. Question mark. One thing that bothers me still about the flat Earth is the red moon that the Earth sh with the Earth's shadow on it. Answer me that one, please, Mark. It's we can do blood moons in a planetarium right now. How do you explain that one? I, then I'm over the top with it. I and it's from Nico. Um, uh, it is very, very interest, well done videos with complete references to the Bible and everything, and that is very important to me. A must for any topic on any controversial thing when it squares up with it. This one really qualifies to me. Thank you for bringing it to my attention. I almost dismissed it as nonsense yet again. It makes some really valid claims. All the best in Christ, Nico. Yeah. Anything you see in the sky is possible. I mean, you you want to go on the blood moon thing? That's fine. Uh, but any... Again, I know I'm older and I've been to planetariums. You got to remember that in planetariums on weekends, back in the day, they used to shut down the stars and the moon and just put a whole bunch of laser beams on the top and people would just get high and it'd be called laser. Look up laser Floyd, laser Led Zeppelin. It was just literally like laser and then put a band name, laser Fleetwood Mac. And they would sync it up to the sound and, and people would be like, oh, wow, man, and that's that's what they would do. And if you ever had the chance, it was really interesting. Although when I was a kid and did that, it was a little uncomfortable for me because all the kids, the older kids smelled funny. Yeah, smelled like, smelled like drugs. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth spelled backwards. I got, I see what you did there. Hey, Mark, great to speak with you yesterday. Meet. Okay, the boat. Wait. You're a smart guy. You'll figure out the name. Oh, so you put Flat Earth in reverse on your boat. That's what you named the boat. She's named Grumpy Old Men currently, but I've renamed her. I've gotten this 2012 beauty after wanting to buy it and trailer in January of 2018. Needs a motor and accessories, but it's an amazing boat. Her name will turn heads for sure. Secondly, after speaking with you, two blokes have contacted me, Flat Earth, and I've replied. All the best. Feet on the ground in Australia. That's from Lincoln Sharp. That's awesome, man. He's got this cool little boat, this little fishing boat, and he's uh, he's renamed it from Grumpy Old Men to Flat Earth Spelled Backwards. That's awesome. Very sneaky. This one's called Your Survival Guide. Wow, literally. Wait, is there anything in this at all? It's still spinning, and we're going to say no, it's not. Okay, so Survival Guide, he got that. This one's called Flat Earth Great Britain and the Isles of Scotland. Dear Mark... There's about 50 question marks next to it. I'd like to thank you for your 
challenge to Rob Skiba to test the globe after watching his programs. I knew I'd have to do some calculations to a view I'd witnessed across the sound of Jura many years ago while holidaying in Scotland. At 55 degrees north, the supposed height that you should not see due to the curvature of the earth is 100 feet plus for a distance of nine and a quarter statute miles. I was looking across 10.8 miles of water and I could clearly see the beach in the Isle of Jura, which I, that's J-U-R-A by the way, which I should not be able to see from the Christian campsite at Port Bon in K-I-N-T-Y-R-E. I hope to go back up there and do some photography of what I saw and hopefully post online. I couldn't believe when the local radio station in Leeds, West Yorkshire, started ridiculing flat earthers. However, as a British Christian, I have to issue an apology for the church in England accepting the ball earth as the norm back in the 1600s. From a historically point, historical point of view, the English version of the Bible was first printed in 1475, then as the counter to that Along comes Copernicus in 1520. God bless you, Bill. Cool. Awesome. Uh, this one's called Dale's Article. Hey, Mark, I finally got around to seeing the YouTube featuring Dale. If you still have it available, I'd really appreciate getting a copy of this article, The Throne of God. Thanks and God bless Christopher. And yep, it was a paper that it was a special strange world episode where an air traffic controller and a flight instructor were talking to each other and one of them had written a paper it's called harmony it's sitting on my desktop if anybody wants it. it is not light reading i'll say that right now this one's called survival guide and need a promo for the meetup in sanford florida which i already did yep yep hi mark it's leo from louisiana living in orlando florida mark flat earth has changed many of my friends lives i kind of like introducing it to everyone that thinks we're open-minded but warning i'll tell them this information will change your life and like any curious child they look at it blam the process begins flat earth clues scary music playing congratulations on your success i appreciate you for introducing me to the truth in april of 2015 quote for the peanut gallery smile at the sunshine and laugh at the rain Ah, that's nice it's by louisiana purpose cool and i did that meetup trailer this one's called Malaysian 370. Why do people keep focusing on Malaysian 370? Uh, even two months ago, I don't remember. Hi, Mark. Thanks for what you're doing. I would like to bring to your attention a subject that's bugging me over the past few years. It's about MH370 that went missing, never to be found. We know it was en route due north to Beijing and then suddenly turned due south, went off radar and was never found. My opinion is maybe the Piole or Piolets were flat earthers looking for the truth and were shot down over in Antarctica. That's the reason we never recovered the wreckage. It's kind of strange that this day and age a plane just just go missing. Yeah, especially flagships, triple sevens. Triple sevens are beautiful planes, state of the art. Why would they ever go missing? For me, I'm sure that them guys in the cockpit wanted to do the run north south and we then were shot down. <laughs> Hello from Dublin, Ireland. Ireland is flat, I assure you. That's from Philip. Awesome. This one's called M Theory Paper. Please screwed up the first try. Greetings, Mark. Please forward the paper mentioned during the air traffic controller meets flight instructor on Flat Earth Tuesday episode. I'm a real person, an experimental physicist by education with only an engineering physics associate and a physics bachelor degree. I know we don't count me as qualified, but I'd love to read the paper regardless. Love the shows and entertainment you have been providing the people. As a former teacher and university physics lab instructor, you can imagine the unlearning I've had to endure just considering the implications. I swear we prove that the globe is at least three different ways, but somehow a new magical spell or new equation suddenly made it work out. Except I would keep asking questions, even as the teacher later, uh, as a teacher later, I loved great questions. Hmm. Has my mind become so open that my brains have fallen out? Looks flat, feels still. It's all been lies. Holy crap, flat man. Warmest regards, Blake. Yeah. Good stuff, Blake. This one's called, in reference to Hot Potatoes 219, Mark, you don't have swag. NASA has swag stands for scientific wild ass guess <laughs> keep up keep it up mark that's from jason this one's called globe larger than they say mark great show honestly i am convinced of only one thing things are not what they have been told 
what we have been told. Even if gravity is real, I am sure the Earth is way larger than they are telling us. This is why we are unable to measure curvature. There are only two options. Either the Earth is flat or it is a huge ball with other ponds of land in it. Thanks for the enjoyable show. Sincerely, Warren. Like it. Just ripping through these. This one's called Drone Test. Dear Mark, I want to bounce off an idea to test the rotation speed of the global Earth theory. If the test, mathematically spoken, is achievable, I would like to keep it behind closed doors until we have results. I'm not a mathematician. I hope your contacts in this field might be able to assist. If the Earth spins at 1,000 miles an hour at sea level and the equator, what would happen if we launch a drone a few feet above the surface and keep it static at that specific point by means of an algorithm or gyro system? Would the drone drift as Earth moves, which by the globe Earth theory would drift about 260 miles, 15 minutes? I doubt it. Um, I mean, that's fast. 260 miles in 15 minutes, even for a drone, is ridiculous. Uh, the question would be, uh, if we could achieve this by means of an observable drone experiment, if so, what would we need to keep in mind? If not, why? I don't know. I don't think it's it's going to, you're going to, it's going to pull it, you're going to be able to pull it off. If this had not been done yet and is achievable, because really talking about a mini helicopter experiment is what we're talking about. We would like to do it here in South Africa, where I stay partly as an awareness campaign, but mostly because we like drones in a flat earth. Hope to hear from you soon. Warms south african regards dennis ross yeah i you don't have to rethink that one it's it's we've been thinking about the helicopter since day one a smaller version of helicopter not gonna help you uh this one's called mark Sargent wants his autographs back hello mark you are most welcome oh let's see here uh but it is i who want to thank you this is when uh, main uh, red red uh red letter media hadn't sent me my autograph copies of this of their um characters caricatures back you played a very instrumental part in awakening two years ago the mission of spreading the flat earth is probably only comparable to being in politics there are a lot of enemies in politics as well as fe uh, funny how they know how they are almost one and the same yeah every day i do my best in the world of social media to spread the truth it is a thankless job but my coat of armor grows with each new piece of knowledge of our true earth but those of you who have the talent to produce videos you are the real heroes of this great great awakening i don't know about that i have an attached an excel spreadsheet that i came across in the most unusual manner yesterday i'm notorious for having multiple tabs open in multiple screens sometimes causes my computer to crawl i was trying to close one tap of YouTube out because I have at least five open and suddenly a spreadsheet opens of the YouTube panel. I don't know if I will catch you live uh, today or not, but I do try to catch your cast video every day. I couldn't go to the first conference, but come hell or high water, I will be in Denver. Thank you again for everything you have done in, and sacrifice for humanity. I know that my... That may sound grandiose, but I know how much grief I have received from my friends and family, so I can only imagine what you've been through. Stay strong, Mark Sargent, and keep fighting the good fight for God and for mankind. You're welcome. This one's called Three More Zane Flat Earth Songs for your playlist. Mark, Zane has taken a trip back in time to make more Flat Earth music with stars from the past. This time he went to the psychedelic 60s and partied with the Doors, then forward to the 90s grunge scene to catch up with Nirvana and Alice in Chains. Enjoy him. Yep, check out Zane Music's channel. All sorts of fun stuff. I can really click on it real fast just to make sure I get the channel name right. And the channel name is called... It's called Zane. Z-A-N-E. So there you go. He does a lot of flat earth music. This one's called Brazilian researchers prove flat earth. Yep, yep, yep. I know that one. Hello, Mark Sargent. Check this one out. That's from a uh, guy in Jerusalem, VD. This one's called Globe Indoctrination in Kindergarten. Mark, my son came home today learning about the Earth. I like how they have a definition of a globe. A globe is a special kind of map that shows the shape of the Earth and where places are located. I can't wait for parent-teacher conference to bring up some concerning issues. Oh, God. I will also like the survival guide sent to me. Thanks for the show. I listen to uh, everything you do live and on YouTube. That's from Marty. And uh, Marty, 
Remember, if you want the survival guide, don't put it at the end of the email. Otherwise, I like he sent this thing at the end of March, and now I'm only now going to send him the survival guide because I read it at the end. Remember, because when I first see your emails, before I, yeah, I get rid of all the junk and spam, but I don't read the whole thing. I just like, okay, I'll probably read this on air. It's it's short enough, and it seems concise enough. I'll, I'll read it, but I don't actually read it. I just kind of scan it for just loose content. All right, this one's called Convex Earth. Hey, Mark, just watched a Convex Earth documentary, and holy crap, I got to get your take on it. Anyway, have a good one. Yeah, if it's the one by the Brazilians, uh, the first hour of it with the experiments are pretty good, but if you look into their back stuff, they, they talk to an alien named Bibu or Bilu. He's speaking in Portuguese. Does not help their case. Don't bring aliens into it. This one's called Question About the Height of the Dome. Dear Mark, I'm writing from China, and I believe the Earth is flat. I admire your work and dedication. I got a question. I'm a bit confused about the height of the dome and the height of the sun and the moon. Feed your mind in his video said the dome started from 32 miles all the way to 620 miles. Hmm. But there are many other videos measuring the height of the sun and the moon at three to 4,000 miles. Yep, that's... There's... It's not even a conflict. It's just where they fit in with each other. Is the sun and the, Are the sun and the moon inside or outside the structure? Don't know. Don't know, because you could go either way with it, unless you were worried that the civilization might try to land or do something with the sun and the moon. I mean, it's safer to be put up, to put them outside of the dome. Would you know? You'd have to to tweak a few things to to get the uh, projection just the way you want it. But either way, I'm fine with it. Uh, and it just goes on. Uh, the sun and the moon are inside or out. What's your view on this? Appreciate it. you can send me any video links to explain this, since I can't find any. Keep the good word. Best, Isaac. This one's called uh, the Theory Paper Request. Greetings, Mark. Please forward the paper mentioned during the... Wait, I already got this one. This is from Blake. He sent it twice because I hadn't sent it to him right away. All right, this one's called Angel Out of Cracked Globe. Yeah, that's a beautiful picture. I haven't really used it in anything. It's in Hawaii, though. Uh, Mark, Carissa, and Jeremiah from Hawaii here and road tripping through Sedona th today when we captured a shot from the car of the statue of an angel coming out of a cracked globe. There's something in what I think is Latin written at the base. Do you know anything about this? Uh, no, I don't know anything about that. It's a beautiful sculpture, though. Fantastic. It's like, a, it's like a thin athletic version of the Statue of Liberty coming out of a cracked globe with, with wings. That's a beautiful picture. I'll use it in a thumbnail here pretty soon. I think I've already gotten the slideshow. This one's called M Question for Mr. Sergeant, author book, Flat Earth Clues, The Sky's the Limit. Oh, okay. Apparently he bought the book. Mr. Sergeant, my name is Ralph Wilms, and I am from the Netherlands. First of all, sincere thanks and appreciation for, appreciation for your radio program and videos on Enclosed World Books. Right now, I am studying the topic of the so-called globe flat earth discussion, and I am aware that NASA is lying to us on many issues. And right now, I am in a discussion with someone and have been reading a lot of resources with defense and the flat earth to prove the contradictions and lies presented by NASA. Now, I came across your great book, The Flat Earth Clues, The Sky's Limit, and knew that your book would be an important tool and information on this issue for in-depth study and defense but right now i don't have the financial resources and money to order a copy and i have been really hoping to get a printed copy and not a pdf or ebook because i cannot read long time from computer screen and printed book copy is much more helpful in my study i was wondering if there might be a way for you to send me a copy of flat earth clues because here in the netherlands is a lack of kind of important knowledge if not i also understand I uh, hope to hear from you, and God bless. Thanks, R Ralph Wilms. Uh, look, it's it's not an expensive book. It's paperback. It's not like it has gold and gilded edges or anything. I, I think it's, what, 10 15 bucks, Something like that. Uh, I, I can't send you... I, I mean, you can download really pretty much all the, uh, the bulk of the text uh, from enclosedworld.com, or you can just ask me for the transcripts. I can I can send you just the rough transcripts. I, I can't send you copies of the book, unfortunately. I don't even have copies here. They all, they all come from Amazon. This one's called Gravity Problems. Oh, are we going to end on this one? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, let's end on this one. Maybe. Uh, hi, Mark. I have any problems with the concept of gravity. How can it hold the atmosphere of the Earth against the incredibly strong vacuum of space? Yes, absolutely. Yet allow water to evaporate or smoke or rise. Yep. The power of an absolute vacuum would be so immense, I can only imagine it would have the destructive power of a high-yield explosion everywhere and all the same time pulling everything apart. Surely 
anything that goes into a vacuum of space would need to be built like a submarine, but in total reverse. Yep, yeah, yeah. Actually, a submarine would work in space because, well, yeah, but yeah, engineered a little differently because the submarine's designed for outward pressure. It'd have to be designed for inward. To keep the pressure from being externally ripped apart. Think Madgeberg experiment, but on an unlimited scale for the vacuum of empty space power. All rivers flow downhill towards the sea, yet we are told we live on a globe Earth and gravity holds it down. Surely this means they must run uphill yet. If they did, every river could be many miles wide and create floodplains. They're called waterfalls for a reason. There are no water use water risers. Hmm. On a lighter note, I have, during my working life, had the pleasure or displeasure of refitting student accommodation. I vividly, vividly remember the dust of four students living together for one month that never cleaned or used a vacuum cleaner. So my problem is, who's cleaning the International Space Station? Yep, isn't that the damn truth? Absolutely right. That place should be grimy as hell. Oh, should be awful. Absolutely awful. The air filter systems would be working overtime, and even then it couldn't get it at all. I wonder how the human ear and balance works in a constant long-term weightless environment. The, the vestibular system must be going crazy. Also true. Only takes an ear infection or water stuck in the ear from a swimming pool or a shower to earth and you lose your balance. What happens to your digestive system from eating or drinking in constant weightlessness? Yeah, all these good good points that convex earth youtube vid done by south american scientists makes them some very interesting watching thanks for your channel your genuine caring nature and success in helping others realize they need to question more and that's from paul and we're going to end on that one it's a good one to end on great questions great positive energy so Thank you for everyone who has written so far and everyone's going to write in the future. Remember, you can send your questions to M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at Comcast.net. And until next time, guys, stay flat. <laughs>